Hello friends, welcome back to Physics and Animation. Today in this video, we will talk about a new term, that is electric flux. To understand electric flux, let's consider a scenario where there is a plane with an area A and a uniform electric field E is acting perpendicular to it. In order to measure the flow of electric field through a specific area, we introduce a concept known as electric flux. Electric flux is calculated by multiplying the electric field intensity by the area from which the electric field is passing. This calculation gives us a value that represents the amount of electric field passing through the given area. With the help of electric flux, we can better understand the extent of the electric field's influence on the fixed area. Currently, we have the plane perpendicular to the electric field. So the maximum possible electric field lines are passing through the area. However, as we start rotating the plane from its initial position by an angle theta, the number of electric field lines passing through the area decreases. If we draw a perpendicular line from tilted plane to its initial position, we get projected area or effective area through which the electric field lines are passing. In other words, as we rotate the plane from 0 degrees to some theta angle, the effective area decreases. Therefore, if area decreases the electric flux, which represents the quantity of electric field line passing through a fixed area, also decreases. From this observation, we understand that the electric flux also depends on theta. The question arises whether theta will be sin theta or cos theta. And the answer is quite simple. When theta is zero, which means when the plane is perpendicular to the electric field, the maximum area is exposed to the electric field and therefore maximum electric field passes through the area. Also, we know that for 0 degrees, sin theta is 0, while cos theta is maximum. So we can say that the electric flux phi E is equal to E A cos theta. However, defining theta with respect to the plane becomes a bit tricky. To simplify the calculation, we define a perpendicular area vector for the plane, whose magnitude is equal to the area of the plane. For a 2D surface, we take the area vector perpendicular to the surface of the plane and along the direction of the electric field, while for the 3D surface, area vector is taken outward normal. Ok, now with the help of the angle between the area vector and the electric field, we can determine at what angle the plane has tilted with respect to the electric field when it is rotated. Furthermore, if we do not rotate the plane, but instead pass the electric field through the plane at a certain angle, we can still calculate the angle theta between the electric field and the area vector. By defining the area vector, it becomes easy to understand the orientation of a surface with respect to the electric field. It provides information about the direction in which the surface is pointing and this makes the calculation easier. This is why we define an area vector for an area which is actually a scalar quantity. Now, we have an electric field passing through the plane making an angle theta with the area vector. We know that electric field is a vector quantity that can be split into horizontal and vertical components. Here the horizontal component is E cos theta and the vertical component will be E sin theta. In this case, we will only consider a horizontal component E cos theta as it passes perpendicular through the plane. We don't consider E sin theta because it is not passing through the plane. As we have seen before, the electric flux is equal to E A. And in this case, we have calculated the electric field component passing perpendicular to the plane, that is E cos theta. Thus we get the same equation for electric flux, which is equal to E A cos theta. From this equation, we understand that electric flux is a dot product or scalar product of electric field vector E and the area vector A. So we can simply define electric flux as the number of electric field lines passing through a given area. Electric flux indicates the quantity of electric field lines passing through a given surface and is a scalar quantity. At theta equals 90 degrees, electric flux linking to a surface will become zero as cos 90 equals to zero, which we can see in the animation that at theta equals 90 degrees, electric field is parallel to the surface and not passing through the surface. If we have any given surface, 
other than basic shapes like rectangular or square. In such cases, we will simply consider the delta A small element of area over the surface. For this element, the electric flux del phi E is equal to the dot product of E and del A. Similarly, we can divide the surface into small del A elements and calculate the electric flux for each of them. We can add them together to find the approximate electric flux passing through the surface. We can finally express electric flux phi E approximately equal to summation of dot product of E and del A. To find the exact value, we need to consider del A tending to zero and then use the integral to obtain the exact value. In integral form, the electric flux phi E is equal to integral of E dot dA which is equivalent to integral of E dA cos theta. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.